Shiksha Mantra once again. Welcome you to a very new and fresh video on education, learning and obviously many promotional aspects. So today we are going to discuss about an academic topic. Yes dear friend, we have already discussed a lot about these and that is clauses. If you haven't uh, seen it, I am placing the link in the i button. You can check it from there and learn the basics of clauses because clauses is very much important for English grammar learning. But we have already discussed the basics of clauses and noun clauses. So today we are going to discuss about the adjective clauses or which we call relative clauses so so let's start. we are here to discuss adjective clauses and that also is known as relative clauses an adjective clause is a group of words which contains a subject and a predicate of its own and does the work of an adjective and so qualifies some noun or pronoun in the main clause an adjective clause is introduced by a relative pronoun or by a relative adverb. So, if we consider the, uh, the example here, uneasy lies the head that we use a crown. So, uneasy lies the head, this is the principal clause and that we use a crown, that's the subordinate clause. And we are claiming that this part is an adjective clause. But why? If we consider this clause it's introduced with a relative pronoun that that is indicating the head a noun and it's describing the noun the head that's why it's performing the task of an adjective and we consider this as an adjective clause the same thing happens in the next sentence the house where the accident occurred is nearby so the relative adverb here is very adjacent to the antecedent noun. It comes just after the antecedent noun and it describes that very noun and making the clause of the characteristics of an adjective and we call it an adjective clause. And as you know, an adjective clause is also called a relative clause and that's because of those relative adjectives and relative adverbs. But we should remember that a relative pronoun introduces a coordinate clause. This is very much vital. How? I met Rama who, that means and he, gave me your message. So if we uh, read out the sentence, I met Rama who gave me your message. So here, who isn't uh, only introducing a relative clause. Rather, who is used here to mean and he. So, the result is a coordinate clause and not a subordinate clause and the sentence is a compound sentence. Though it appears to be a relative clause, but it in no way identifies or describes Rama. How? I met Rama. Who gave me your message? So, who gave me your message? That cannot be a description for the noun Rama. Rather, this is a continuation of the story. So, another principal clause. So, we have told that this is not an adjective clause. Rather, this is a coordinate clause and it's a compound sentence. He is the boy who broke the window. The clause who broke the window is clearly identified and it describes the boy and is an adjective clause. So that's it. And now in our next slide, if we uh, are to know a lot about adjective clauses, we must know more about adjective clauses and how these are the examples of who, that is and which, used to introduce a coordinate clause. Like I met Mr. Josie, who, that means and he, thereupon shook hands with me. He gave me a message, which, that means and it, is this. The prisoner was taken before the captain, who, that means and he, 
condemned him to instant death. He released the bird which and it at once flew away. So every sentence that we have produced here as examples, these are not relative clauses or adjective clauses. These are rather coordinate clauses. And here the relative pronoun and relative adverb introducing an adjective clause is sometimes understood and not expressed as it all you can. Here the relative pronoun that is understood. We must place uh, that here, but that is not done. We have make this relative pronoun that as suppressed and the result is obviously relative clause and that is introduced with a relative pronoun and the sentence is a complex sentence. On the day you pass the examination, I shall give you a reward. The same thing happens, you pass the examination. So, on the day when you pass the examination, the same thing happens uh, here as well. So, in this way, we can omit a relative pronoun or a relative adverb in a relative clause. And here, we are going to learn more about adjective clauses in order English but is used as a relative pronoun as in the sentences below. In such cases, but is equivalent to a relative pronoun followed by not. So here, there was not a woman present but wept to hear such news. That is, there was not a woman present. Now from here you'd cut this, who did not weep to hear such news. So here but is used as a relative pronoun and the result is not a compound sentence or a coordinate clause, rather a subordinate clause and complex sentence. So I hope uh, you have found just the opposite which we have uh, discussed in our previous slides. Now there's another sentence, there was not a window, which sorry. Now there was another sentence. There was not a widow but longed to die upon the pyre of her husband. So, who did not long to die upon the pyre of her husband. So, here, but again is used as a relative pronoun and the sentence is an adjective clause. So, here we would learn than. Note that than is sometimes used as a proposition before a relative pronoun in the adjective clause. As they elected rum than whom no better boy ever went to school. So the adjective clause whom no better boy ever went to school is introduced with than as a proposition. It was a blow than which no Cruella was ever struck. We came to a spot than which mine eyes have seldom seen a lovelier. And this another will follow Brutus than whom Rome knows no nobler son. And again in our effort to discuss about adjective clauses, we have reached the infinitive. So, the infinitive with to is often used as the equivalent of an adjective clause. How? Give me some food which I may eat. If you consider this part which I may eat, this is an adjective clause. And now, we are producing the same sentence as give me some food to eat. So, to eat, this infinitive works as which I may eat. So, it does the work of an adjective clause. And now there is another sentence. The doctor has given me medicine which I must take. The doctor has given me medicine to take. So which I must take, that stands for to take. I have work which I must do. So I have work to do. So that's how an adjective clause can be replaced with to in infinitive. And we have now 
at the end of so you must remember show. one very simple fact that when you are producing an adjective clause you must put what the relative pronoun or the relative adverb right after its antecedent noun with the adjective clause and that's the tricks it would play and it would help you to produce adjective clauses successfully so now it's time to say goodbye if you like this video like it subscribe it and comment if you want new chapters to be discussed and if you find this channel worthy enough to be subscribed so please tap the subscribe button with the bell icon on it and with obviously selecting the notifications so that we may stay connected so we'll meet again with a fresh video until then bye bye